All right, so let us start uh, our uh, webinar. It is a uh, great uh, pleasure and honor that um, uh, everybody is here. And uh, as you can see from the number of attendants, the interest uh, that the webinar has raised is quite large. And uh, well, the reason is that, as you probably, well, all of you know, because uh, I've been in touch with, uh, but with all of you, um, uh, during the last few months, a group of us, a scientist from uh, Mexico, have been um, uh, pushing together with the uh, um, directorate of GINER, the possibility that Mexico becomes an associate member of GINER. And um, so this webinar is the official kickoff uh, of, uh, say, these efforts in the sense that uh, with the previous contacts that uh, we've uh, established between ourselves, uh, among ourselves. Uh, I think that uh, what is needed now is uh, some information from uh, uh, the inside of the lab. For that matter, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, Professor Manin and Professor Kekelitze, who have uh, uh, agreed on uh, presenting us uh, insiders' point of view uh, of, of GINAR so that uh, our community, uh, scientific and technological community, and also uh, our um, uh, diplomatic uh, representation in, in Russia, as well as our funding agency, um, uh, gets more acquainted with these um, uh, developments and uh, the possibilities of cooperation, as well as of uh, uh, establishing uh, uh, stronger liaisons, not only scientific, but also uh, from a technological point of view. So in that, in that sense, I'd like to also thank uh, that um, the, the, our uh, uh, diplomatic uh, representation in, in Russia has kindly um, agreed uh, to, uh, to accompany these efforts. And also our uh, funding agency, in particular the International Cooperation uh, Department of our funding agency has also kindly agreed to gather the information and to transmit it to uh, uh, higher levels within uh, uh, our funding agency. So, um, the, let's see if I don't, uh, I'm not missing anything else. Um, uh, well, again, um, I think that this is um, uh, enough as an introduction. Uh, the end of the, uh, well, I will proceed now to, uh, to uh, ask uh, um, Professor Kamani and Professor Kekalitze to, uh, to uh, tell us about uh, Jinnar and uh, Mika, respectively. Professor Kamanin is the head of the International Cooperation Department in Jinnar, and Professor Kekelitze is the vice uh, director of uh, Jinnar, but also he is the head of the NICA project. So um, they will uh, speak to us about uh, Jinnar overall and uh, the NICA project in, in particular, and uh, all of the possibilities of cooperation that are opened for um, interested parties uh, to, 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 to join. And uh, of course, uh, uh, of the many advantages that uh, joining uh, uh, officially from the from the Mexican uh, side, uh, these projects can uh, can have. So, uh, without any more um, uh, introduction, and uh, just 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 to remind you that at the end of these presentations, each one uh, is uh, uh, scheduled to last about thirty minutes. What we will have is a round of questions. Uh, so please uh, feel free to ask any questions at the end of the, of the session. So uh, without any further introduction, uh, Dimitri, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it is a great opportunity to uh, have such a direct contact uh, with colleague on Mexican side. Uh, fortunately, the time difference is just nine hours, not more. So we already have six o'clock, but we are full of enthusiasm on our end, even after hours to, to start communication. But uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, on our side, there is a small team, but uh, I would like to introduce us. Uh, thank you for introduction myself, but let me start from Professor Kikelidze, who is the Vice Director of Institute. Uh, he will give the presentation about NICA, which is uh, definitely at the moment uh, the, biggest, uh, um, the biggest connection between Mexico and GNR. We have also uh, Professor Kostov on board, uh, Vice Director of Institute via International Organization, and he represents uh, uh, Bulgaria in our institute, and uh, Professor Adam Kishel, uh, who is uh, Deputy Director of Wexler-Bardin Laboratory uh, for High Energies. 
Uh, he is responsible for science in the laboratory. And also we have Marina Tumanova, advisor for international relations. So we are, uh, let's say, uh, fully on your side to uh, ask, answer the question afterwards uh, concerning the opportunities of cooperation, the formats, maybe some scientific issues, etc. And our interest, of course, from this kick off meetings, maybe uh, it is even more than we expected from today. But Alexandro put really uh, our expectation on the highest level. So that's uh, introduction from our side. We have winter in Dubna, but it make, makes our energy even much stronger. So if uh, the chairman uh, permit, let me start from the overview of GNR. Please go ahead. Um, okay. Do you see my slides? Um, well, yes, uh, GNA is, of course, a uh, um, research organization, but it's also a platform for international cooperation in science and technology. And let me start my presentation from this uh, picture of island of Dubna, which is not far away from Moscow. Maybe it's one of the most beautiful uh, places in Russia. Uh, if it's right or not, uh, we invite everybody to make their own uh, judgment. Uh, but the matter of fact that uh, it is placed in a nice area, 100 kilometers from Moscow, uh, not far away from Chelimetyevo airport. And also it is a, in a green, uh, ecologically favorable uh, destination because there are no industry, uh, mostly our research institute and uh, some other uh, organization. It's uh, very comfortable for researchers who come here from all over the world. Uh, just a few words about the history of the institute. Uh, as many other organizations uh, which are either making research or coordination in uh, nuclear sciences and nuclear technologies, uh, we were created in the middle of 50s. Uh, and to that time, we already got uh, the first uh, biggest accelerator in the world, which was uh, put in operation in 1949 in the framework of the Soviet atomic project. Uh, but at a certain moment, uh, this laboratory, which was already at this island, uh, was converted into a fully open international organization. This happened on 26th of March, uh, 1956. And uh, already a year later, uh, we got second biggest uh, accelerator in the world. The first one delivered uh, 600 MV protons. And in 1957, we already got 10 GeV neutrons. So it is a really big achievement. And with this base, uh, our institute got wonderful infrastructure, which was developed in due time. And I will uh, present you later some most important pieces of infrastructure. But uh, we uh, started our uh, started our investigations as an international research organization in 1956 with uh, just 12 countries. So at the moment, uh, we have 19 member states in our institute, five associate members. You see the list of the organizations with the years when they are joined. Why some countries have two uh, years? Simply because uh, some um, independent states uh, were former Republic of Soviet Union and in fact participated already since 1956. Uh, uh, but interesting that uh, Czech, uh, Czechoslovakia split in two parts and both parts now participate in, in general work. Uh, six associate members, uh, five associate members um, uh, together with our member states represent uh, former Soviet Republic, a member of EU, and also uh, worldwide destinations. Uh, and uh, if we speak about the, let's say, general partner network, it's over 1,000 destinations in 70 countries. On the panel right from you, you may see who are uh, our partners and how many uh, partner institutions and universities are in these countries. So this profile, in fact, uh, reflects uh, to some extent, uh, the world share in the expertise in nuclear physics. However, of course, this is flexible and depends very much on the interest to our projects. Uh, but uh, just to give you some figure, let me, let me tell you that uh, we have at the moment uh, approximately 5,000 people total staff. Among them, just today, we make an exact number, uh, 1,263 researchers from 33 countries. And uh, four, uh, 450 of them are not uh, Russian citizens. And the third of this uh, is from European Union. But uh, as I told you, we are uh, organization having destinations worldwide, also in Latin America. And we are uh, happy to uh, report that our cooperation with Mexico uh, developing in such a uh, high velocity. 
So um, just to uh, give you a flavor of uh, what is GNI in terms of research infrastructure, let me tell you that uh, GNI is a joint institute, not only because we are uh, combining intellectual and technological potential of our member states, but also uh, GNI is institute with joint seven uh, laboratories, Laboratory uh, in our understanding, uh, in our modus is a kind of institute inside of GNR, which uh, each one has its own portfolio. Uh, they are shown on the left side, but the most important picture and the most important what I would like to deliver with this, with, with this slide is that the infrastructure which we are working uh, is uh, very contemporary. Uh, let me mention, for example, the cyclotron DC 218, which is a core of the factory of super heavy elements. Uh, everybody knows that uh, Mendeleev table where the super heavy elements were, and 10 of them were uh, produced in, in GNR. Uh, but uh, to secure our um, uh, leadership in this uh, area, we launched uh, this cyclotron recently and started full scale operation. So it was uh, uh, built in 19, uh, to, uh, 2019. Uh, also our research reactor IBO2 uh, was reconstructed, meaning that uh, the old reactor was removed and the new reactor built. Uh, it happened uh, in the beginning uh, in, in, in 2010 and 2012, we already reached the full power. Uh, we launched our own supercomputer in 2018 and it's a special type optimized for input output operation, uh, which was to that time uh, position number nine in IO500 list. So now it's uh, position uh, 30, so time is running, but still uh, it is uh, highly valued. And uh, one of our core infrastructures uh, this year officially reached uh, the um, uh, status of the biggest neutrino telescope in the northern hemisphere. It's a uh, gigaton volume detector uh, in, in Baikal Lake. I will tell a couple of words later. So our infrastructure is very modern, developed, and in a very good shape. Uh, it is recognized uh, in the um, European structures. Uh, perhaps it's important uh, just to uh, see how we are uh, viewed from outside. From 2018, uh, we can find um, uh, super heavy element factory, IBO2, our neutrino telescope, uh, among the strategic papers of Brussels, in particular from uh, S3 landscape. So we uh, are cooperating uh, since uh, almost since creating uh, this churn. And uh, within the uh, last 50 years, we participated in uh, more than 20 uh, major um, uh, CERN pro projects, including uh, three biggest LHC detectors and construction LHC itself. So the level of cooperation was always very high. And uh, something remarkable, I have to say at this moment, that since 2010, not only GNR participate in CERN activity, but also CERN participate in GNR activity, uh, which reflected uh, in the exchange of reciprocal observer status in 2014. So it's some uh, unique feature of our institute. However, uh, for um, all the scientific uh, community in the, in the world, uh, CERN is, of course, a certain benchmark. In this sense, let me uh, report you that uh, the number of publications which produced annually by CERN is, and by GNR is very similar. Uh, some years uh, we produce a bit more, some years CERN a bit more, uh, and um, it is not explained because of our participation in CERN. For that, uh, you can see this uh, green and yellow line. Uh, yellow line is the total number of papers which uh, GNR published, and green line is the uh, number of papers without CERN. So, in fact, uh, the joint publication is only 20% uh, of our total scientific product over years, especially now, um, while uh, the rest is uh, a scientific product uh, which is uh, done on the base of our own infrastructure. Uh, and this is because we are a multidisciplinary organization. We have quite a number of research opportunities at home. Uh, and uh, just uh, to let you know that Institute has dynamically developed uh, within the last uh, decades. And you see here reflection, this red line, uh, the figure of our budget. So at the moment, uh, we have uh, about uh, 200 million US dollar per annum 
the budget. Uh, let me also mention that uh, CERN is not only organization which we are cooperating with, so we are cooperating worldwide uh, with all professional communities in, neutri in neutrons, neutrino, accelerators, uh, so they are listed here, so I will not take your time to mention uh, the acronyms which you very well know. Uh, we have good connections with uh, Vienna Agency, with UNESCO recently, uh, because of NICA uh, facility, we become strategic partner of FAIR, and GNR hold uh, more than 100 uh, international meetings a year. Uh, uh, among them, approximately 10 uh, are big uh, international conferences. Uh, let me also mention that uh, our infrastructure and uh, good opportunities uh, here become a attracting point for quite a number of very interesting events. Some of them are mentioned here. So we launched here the first uh, working group of uh, BRICS uh, uh, research infrastructure and mega science project. So the only meeting in the former Soviet Union uh, of uh, GSO was also in Dubna. NUPEC took our uh, premises as a place, uh, as a venue for the annual meeting, etc. So um, Dubna, in fact, and GNI is a very well known place. And uh, let me uh, come now for uh, uh, giving some information about what kind of research we are doing and what is our research infrastructure. Uh, first of all, our laboratory of theoretical physics is a unique <clears throat> Uh, theoretical institution. Uh, we consider it, say, it uh, as the biggest theoretical institute in the world because we have uh, altogether more than 250 uh, scientists, theoreticians at one under one roof. And uh, the major activities of uh, laboratory of information of theoretical physics are major activities of our institute. So it's particle physics, it's uh, condensed matter physics, and nuclear physics. However, for our major uh, projects, we have uh, special uh, research uh, directions. It's theory of hot and dense baryonic matter from NICA. It's analysis of production of properties of super heavy uh, uh, nuclear. In fact, uh, the prediction of island of stability was done in our institute. Uh, it's a theory of neutrino, it's a theory of uh, materials with neutron beams, and also recently, and that's the reason why supercomputer was built, it's latest QCD calculations. And as usual, the theoreticians are the main engine of our international cooperation. So uh, approximately one third of our publication are coming from this laboratory. Uh, let me mention uh, the experimental laboratory uh, for, first of all, laboratory of um, uh, nuclear reactions, uh, named by after Fleurov. Uh, this laboratory where all the super heavy elements was done, uh, it, it has in operation now uh, three big cyclotrons and two smaller machine. Uh, two big cyclotrons are four meter cyclotrons, one for production of uh, light exotic nuclear. I will tell you a few words later about that. Uh, energy which are accessible at this uh, cyclotron is up to 100 MeV per nucleon. Uh, U400 is a machine for super heavy element study. It delivers typically 10 MeV per nucleon. And we have a smaller uh, machine, which is implanter IC100. Uh, it is 1 MeV per nucleon. Uh, and because of this machine, uh, we have very good opportunities to study track uh, H membranes and modification uh, of materials. And for that, we have a special nano laboratory, which also make our a laboratory unique because uh, there are not so many places where you have uh, research opportunities of such type together. Uh, and uh, I already mentioned uh, the new uh, machine for super heavy elements. Let me show you the picture. This is really a wonderful new cyclotron with a quite a number of uh, separators and facilities. And you see uh, what kind of uh, beams it delivers. Of course, this machine is optimized for acceleration uh, of uh, medium heavy uh, ions. Uh, like calcium, titanium, etc. So it can uh, deliver uh, uh, really the most powerful beam of uh, calcium 48. Uh, and now we are working on accelerator of titanium and chromium because uh, to go further with super heavy element study, we need uh, more heavier uh, beams. That's uh, kind of know-how. So uh, uh, experiments are already ongoing since uh, last year. Uh, as for uh, low energy, low, low mass part, uh, light exotic nucleus, uh, we have a very advanced uh, setup, uh, which is called ACULINA, which is acronym for Accurate um, uh, uh, Magnetic Line. And uh, which what kind of, of exotic beams we can produce is here on the left panel. 
Uh, the machine itself was recently built by uh, French uh, company Sigma Phi, and uh, you see here uh, recently received, uh, recently obtained a zero degree magnet. And this small picture on the right hand side is something unique. Uh, one uh, of the unique facilities which we have uh, in our disposal is a cryogenic target system for tritium and deuterium, with also permission to work with uh, metallic tritium. So it's a quite interesting, and this gives us an opportunity to study property of nuclear uh, on the border of stability. Of course, uh, there are famous problems uh, of nuclear hollows, nuclear skill, reaction with hollow neutrons, uh, nucleus, but also uh, it is uh, quite a big variety of spectroscopic study uh, and some exotic things like two protein radioactivities, but uh, among others, very interesting problem of uh, magic numbers uh, at the border of stability could be solved at least for uh, uh, magic numbers two, eight and 20. Um, Iber 2 reactor. Um, it's a unique reactor. Uh, it's only one uh, of such type in the world, uh, which mechanic with mechanical modulation of reactivity. Uh, the idea was developed uh, some years ago already, uh, and it is a plutonium-based uh, uh, reactor core, uh, fast reactor, of course, uh, surrounded by the moderator. But there is one opening. You see here on the animation how it works. Uh, when two reflecting blades met uh, at opening of the reactor, reactivity uh, of uh, reactor core increased by a factor of 1,000. And instead of uh, mean power 2 megawatt, it become 2 gigawatt. And, uh, but it happened only within a very short time, 200 microseconds. And uh, thus, uh, the density of neutrons on the surface increase from 10 to 13 to 10 to 16. And this gives uh, us opportunity to work uh, with a number of instruments. At the moment, we have 16 instruments uh, for diffraction, for electrometry, small angle scattering, inelastic neutron scattering. Uh, the new uh, directions are radiography, tomography, uh, also, uh, there is a Newton activation analysis. For this, of course, we don't need a pulse structure, but our uh, research group in this field is very strong. And uh, just to give you example what kind of study is done, let me show the next two pictures. Uh, it's kind of real-time studies, a structure study for crystalline materials, uh, for uh, uh, extreme conditions like uh, high pressure, high magnetic field. Uh, it is study of characterization of nanostructures, biological object polymers, uh, also opportunities for structural study in liquid and soft materials, uh, thin films, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a really great machine for uh, condensed matter studies. Um, let me uh, mention uh, next big project, which is uh, gigaton volume detector on Baikal Lake. Baikal is uh, 5,000 kilometers away from here to the east. Uh, however, Baikal, uh, it's the biggest sweet water uh, lake on the earth, which is enough deep to install big facility inside. And clear water is a perfect media to uh, detect uh, Cherenkov light. So uh, uh, it has several advantages. Uh, it is, of course, uh, can, it can be compared with ice cube in Antarctic, but advantage are clear of water and precise positioning. And uh, of course, uh, uh, this is excellent opportunity for astrophysics study of evolution, universe, active core of galactus, etc. So we're looking uh, to the thousand sky through the Earth. And uh, already 10 cascades event with energy uh, uh, above uh, 100 TF uh, were already uh, selected within the last uh, uh, three years. Uh, this is uh, uh, the construction of this uh, detector is underway, uh, but we have already open international collaboration where five countries uh, and 10 institutes from Russia and Europe are participating. Uh, uh, neutrino study are not only on Baikal Lake, uh, 300 away from Dubna, there is uh, uh, so called uh, Kalinin power plant. Uh, it, uh, it is based uh, on pressurized water reactors of a rare type uh, with thermal power of three uh, uh, gigawatt. And the main feature of this facility is that uh, before the uh, uh, facility was constructed, we agreed on scientific instrument right under the core of reactor. And quite a number of experiments was already performed with detectors 
uh, at several blocks of this uh, power plant. Uh, it is a um, measurement of neutrino magnetic momentum, of scattering of uh, uh, neutrino on uh, nuclear. And uh, the ongoing experiment is a mosaic plastic uh, scintillator array, which is used for study of oscillation of neutron because it's movable, but also uh, it has uh, uh, some applied value for monitoring of uh, uh, reactor. Uh, let me say uh, just several words about our multifunction information computer complex. Uh, it is uh, one of the youngest laboratory in our institute, a laboratory of information technologies. And it's also unique, unique because uh, it's only laboratory where three uh, different type uh, in different computer infrastructures are made. Uh, first of all, we are host uh, of one of the 13 uh, tier one nodes uh, for CERN. So we are, uh, our tier one node is particular for CMS. Uh, but uh, over many years, we are hosting also one of the leading tier two clusters. Uh, we have very extended uh, uh, cloud uh, computing system, including data lakes, uh, storage, etc. And uh, also, I already spoken about uh, supercomputer. So, combination of such three types make our laboratory unique, but also the uh, portfolio of research which is done with this computer is already quite wide. Uh, but uh, GNI is not only uh, such a mega science and not, not only nuclear facility. Let me give you some example. Uh, the youngest laboratory in our institute is Laboratory of Radiation Biology. Mainly it's originated from the need of human missions to space. And uh, nowadays it's a really a big variety of different research in molecular radiobiology, radiation genetics, radiation cytogenetics, uh, clinical radiobiology. By the way, we are uh, pioneers in the proton therapy, and since many years we have uh, our own uh, therapy uh, facility uh, for deeply lying tumors. And uh, it is not a, a medical clinic, it's, it's a, a laboratory for research, but still uh, over many years, uh, approximately 100 of patients get uh, uh, treated there with a very high, uh, very, very nice results. So uh, this laboratory also has some spin-offs in astrobiology, radiation protection, etc. And let me show you one of the examples. Uh, everybody knows that uh, Opportunity Rover seeked for water in Gale Crater. And uh, here you may see the stand in our uh, institute, uh, which especially emulates the Martian soils. Uh, it is because one of our instruments uh, in cooperation with Roscosmos and NASA is located on Opportunity Rover. And uh, we are making uh, emulation of Martian soils with a glass of silicate uh, oil, uh, silicate uh, glass and uh, aluminum sheets. Uh, so it's not only uh, one um, uh, of such kind of facilities, there's lunar orbited, uh, there's uh, Mercury missions, etc. So quite a number of applications. Uh, also, we have variety of laboratory instruments. So those people who uh, are involved in uh, biological study probably could estimate this value. So it's a sequinator, uh, microscope, samplers, etc., etc. So big, big park of unique uh, laboratory equipment. Let me just a uh, few words uh, about uh, our future. Uh, we have uh, accelerators, uh, uh, cyclotrons covering uh, energy up to 100 MeV per nucleon. Nika, you will hear the next presentation. Uh, it is already gigavolts per nucleon. Uh, we have reactor, uh, we have electron accelerators with gamma rays. Uh, but what is missing uh, is synchrotron. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of modern uh, research is done with synchrotron, and this gap was filled by decision of our Committee of Planet Potentials. One of our member states, Poland, uh, gave us uh, opportunity to build our own facility, which uh, will be uh, used by GNI uh, with uh, common approaches, other instruments uh, in Poland and Krakow. And this, is will, this will be very soon. So end of construction uh, should be 2023. And uh, uh, in a view of uh, demand um, of researchers for applied research, especially in radiobiology, we put forward the concept uh, of innovation center. Uh, with the main task of developing technology and method uh, in the field of nuclear and radiation medicine, radiation material science, advanced training of specialists from general member states for radiation biology, medical physics. So it means that we will create several new facilities. Uh, one of them will be a new cyclotron, especially for testing of electronic components. 
uh, it should be ready in two years. Uh, the new facility will be a radiochemical laboratory of class one. It will be based most probably on 40, ham, uh, 40 uh, MeV uh, commercially available rhodotron accelerator. Uh, it will be user facility at NICA for uh, irradiation of radio biological objects uh, and test of semiconductor electronics. Uh, it will be also certain laboratory equipment for radiation biology, and it will be new facility for research and, and design in beam therapy. So uh, currently we are working on the uh, 430 MeV superconducting proton cyclotron. Uh, all this need, of course, a lot of efforts to uh, involve young people in science. And for that, we have special division, which is called University Center. So we are international research organization, not university, but we have to provide condition for young people, uh, mostly of master and PhD level, to work in our laboratories and to prepare the graduation thesis. And uh, our university center has several uh, programs for young uh, people. And let me mention three of them. Uh, first of all, uh, it's international student practice. It's three, three weeks for young researchers here in Dubna. You can see this on your right. And uh, it is very well used by our member states. From Latin America, we have uh, uh, participation from Cuba and already uh, we have a few people from Chile. Uh, there is more advanced program, uh, which is a couple of months uh, in GNR for making research. It's typically for PhD studies. And uh, before COVID, of course, we are measuring now mostly before COVID because uh, it is in-person participation. Uh, it was uh, uh, two and a half hundred of, uh, participant uh, in five years. And you may see that it's already uh, widely <clears throat> internationally used. Uh, in the first case, when there are three weeks, the selection is done by our partner and payment is done by our partner. We are not commercial organization, but still ticket and accommodation should be uh, paid. Uh, in the second case, when there's two weeks in uh, two, two months in GNR, uh, selection and payment is done on our side. So we are inviting and we cover all expenses. Uh, but uh, after COVID started, we understood uh, that uh, we have to develop also online training. Uh, most probably it will be uh, in place even after after COVID finished, uh, we provide supervisor uh, per, per uh, internet connection, and this uh, work in so-called waves. So it's a campaign to invite people. So selection is again done on our side, and we see that uh, uh, we already carried uh, four campaigns, and they were very successful and very well. Um, uh, well, well occupied. And uh, out of those people who already participate, and there is a lot of demand to come here in person. Uh, but uh, there are also acquaintance program, not only for young researchers, but also for decision makers. Uh, it is uh, program names, uh, general expertise for member states and partner countries. It is five days uh, in GNR. Uh, we are shown all facility, make connection with our leading expert, with management of GNR, and you see how much it is used internationally. Uh, well, uh, uh, it covers the range uh, from uh, contacts point in universities or research organization up to a ministerial level. Uh, and we think that it will be also one of the vehicles for uh, Mexico uh, to be involved in and be quanted in uh, the, our opportunity here uh, in Dubna. Uh, most probably we can offer you in April, but the choice in, on your side. Uh, just to finish, let me say that uh, in our understanding, what is uh, uh, how we can we, we can uh, show the opportunity like a picture? Uh, the picture is such a nice white ship on Volga, and everything is prepared, and uh, you are just expected to buy a ticket and to get on board. Uh, we will discuss hopefully later today uh, what could be done. Uh, as a first step for uh, getting on board, uh, but a lot of information could be definitely find uh, on our web page uh, uh, www.gna.ru. General information for researchers, uc.gna.ru uh, is for students and for teachers, and uh, for a web page of GEMS for decision makers, there's also a collection of useful links including our topical plan, where uh, all information about research is, is uh, collected and many other interesting documents. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dimitri, for this very 
nice uh, overview of uh, facilities and opportunities uh, to, uh, for international cooperation. And um, let us, uh, uh, well, please uh, write down your questions and uh, postpone them for later on so that we can now uh, hear and, and listen to and look at uh, Professor uh, Vladimir Kekelitze, who, as you said, uh, uh, is uh, the uh, vice director of, the, of GINER and also uh, the head of the NICA project. So thank you very much uh, uh, again, Dimitri. And uh, Vladimir, can you um, share and, um, and talk? Microphone. Uh, Vladimir, we don't hear you. Okay. Dear oh, Professor Ayam, dear members of this meeting, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the interest of our institute, to the interest of this meeting, and to the organization of this event. Now I'm trying to share my presentation. It seems uh, seems not yet. Something is not going. Okay. You have permissions to uh, to share your screen, Vladimir. Yes, I want to share. Where is it? Share. Home, 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 home. Home. No. No. Yes, we we can see it. Ah. Of course, it's in Russian. Do, do you see some? Do you see my presentation? Now we see it. We see it. Yes, it's a PP, PPTX. Yes. Is it now okay? Yes, it's full screen now. Full screen now. Okay, it's my pleasure to give you a very short uh, presentation on the uh, dedicated to the our flagship project in high energy physics, so called NICA. It means nucleotron based ion collider facility. The main goals are to study hot and dense baryonic matter at the energy range of maximum baryonic density, such density which could be reachable only probably in the core of the neutron stars. Another topic is investigation of nucleon spin structure and polarization phenomena. And uh, our task is to really to understand how the spin of nucleon is composed. And we would like to provide some infrastructure for applied research using this facility. To reach this goal, we need the modernization of existing facility and construction of new one, including the collider, which should collide relativistic ions from proton to gold at the energy range up to 11 GeV, and to collide polarized protons and neutrons at the energy range up to 27 GeV. In case of heavy ions, 11 GeV means per unit. So you know that those who know the QCD phase diagram, which presents the, the variety of the phase of hadronic matter. At the lower part, you see the hadron gas, and even below, you could see the surrounding us wort, the ordinary nuclei, and to get transition to the quark gluon plasma, where the quarks and gluons are free, not confining in the nucleons, you should provide some energy and uh, some density of the baryons. Concerning the region of the low baryonic density, this is X, um, uh, X oxys. Uh, this is a uh, region which is very well studied and explored both by um, uh, experimentalists, this is LHC and Brookhaven, Rick, and uh, they got a lot of interesting discoveries and results in this region. And as well, theory very well describes this region using the lattice QCD approach. Concerning the high baryonic density where Nika is going to explore, which Nika is going to explore, the, uh, this is not so well studied, neither in experimental point of view, nor by theorists, because this is region where theory is not well uh good well predictions because this is so-called long, dis long distance phenomena which is uh, which is rather difficult to to explore the existing theoretical models and and, and approaches but nevertheless 
variety of models uh, predicts uh, possibility to reach such high baryonic density, namely the so-called uh, transport models predicts, you could see on the left side of this plot, that the uh, elapsed time of the, any collision of heavy ions like gold to gold could reach some very high density, five times uh, nominal density of the ordinary nuclei. In case of 5 GV per unit, you could see this line even exceeding this line. But in the case of 10 GV per unit, energy of collision, you could reach even higher possible density, up to eight, even more, up to 10 nominal densities. Probably the same happens during the neutron star merger. And you could see on the right uh, part of this plot, the densities which could be reached in the core of neutral star reaches the same 10 times nominal density. So the density when hadron melts and moves to the quarks and the gluons transition. You could see the energy range to which we are going to explore. When one could reach such maximum density, this is to, uh, between, I would say, 3 and 11 GeV per unit in the center of mass. And you could see the existing facility. This is fixed target experiment at CERN and Hades at GSI. And RIC, this is Brookhaven lab and STAR, especially uh, now provides this low energy, so-called beam energy scan to reach this region of the highest possible baryonic density. And already now the baryonic matter at Nucleatron, the fixed target experiment at the NICA facility is already operational since 1980 and already enters this region. And we expect some interesting results in the near future from this collaboration. And the future facility are the NICA collider with a multipurpose detector and FAIR CBM with a fixed target experiment. You could see the both experiments at NICA, fixed target BM at end, baryon meter at nucleotron, and multipurpose detector at NICA collider really covers all this interesting region of maximum baryon density. And all those experiments are complementary to the CBM at CIS-100 because different approaches could give us variety of studies with a different approach. I mean, fixed target experiment and collider mode, which give different advantages in different regions of, of, of these studies. Another interesting topics is to study the spin composition of the nucleon. And this, uh, the dedicated experiment we call it spin physics detector will be operational in the second interaction point of the Nikola collider when the polarized protons and uh, neutrons will be collided and polarization would be provided in both directions, longitudinal and, and, and transversal. And all these could give us a variety of studies of the complementary probes like Charmonia open chart at prompt photons to study parton distribution functions, namely uh, transverse momentum distribution of, of the sites. Because according to latest uh, experimental studies and theoretical approaches, the gluon polarizations and the gluon orbital, um, orbital moment really should contribute essentially to the composition of the nucleon spin. And approaching to the core composition of the nucleon from both sides, from the high density and the spin composition, could give us unique opportunity to really uh, to really open this uh, this boxes to understood how the quarks are confinement in 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 ordinary nucleons. So to provide this research, we need some facilities, and these slides indicate the existing and future facilities of our complex. First of all, we have the basement, the basic facility. This is Nucleatron, which was in operation since 1993. This is superconducting synchrotron based on the um, superconducting technology developed in our lab, so-called superferric magnets, which uh, has, which could operate at very high magnetic rate and are rather economic. Uh, from point of view of the uh, cryogenic consumption, 
and, and, and this is uh, really those technology which is uh, on the basement of, of all this facility. And that we have injector complex, we have booster, which was put in operation just last year. We have area for applied research, the hole for the fixed target experiment, when where the perinatal nucleotron, the facility is located. And we are now at the stage of uh, civil construction, the building which comprises collider and the two experimental hall or two detectors, MPD and SPD. As I told you last year, just one year ago, the first new facility, uh, we call it booster, synchrotron based on the superconducting magnet developed in our lab was put in operation. And since that time, we had two cycle of technological runs, which provide us rather high level um, uh, beams uh, circulating in this uh, uh, booster. In the first run, we deal with helium, and in the second with a ferrum 14. You could see the stable operation with a high level of vacuum and the level of magnetic field uh, which was reached just uh, the level which was expected due to, uh, according our uh, our project so at the same time electron cooling system with a ferrum ion beam was put in operation and indicated a high efficiency of this method which uh, was, was implemented to cool down the temperature of the beam and diminish any deviation from the nominal uh, momentum circulating in, in this facility. And this is a factory of the magnet production, superconducting magnet, which uh, we provide not only for our uh, project, but as well for the FAIR project. And you could see in this table, how many magnets are already produced for the collider. 100% dipoles are produced and test, and the other magnets as the quadrupoles and the focusing magnets are at the stage of uh, almost half of an, a nominal number are already produced and tested. And we see that uh, all the production is going according to the plans. And this is a civil construction. You could see the status of the of, of September this year. All the facility, all, all, all the building uh, basement and the tunnels and the holes are already constructed. Now we are at the stage of installation of engineering facility, which should provide the necessary conditions for uh, for our facility. We expect that in half a year all the civil construction will be completed. You could see here the tunnels, which are almost ready for the installation of the collider magnets and other facilities. And we expect in one or two weeks, we will start the installation of the first magnet inside this tunnel. The major part of our infrastructure is a cryogenic system. And one of the uh, major facility was the so-called cryogenic compressor station, which is now at the stage of the construction. You could see this new building. All the necessary equipment inside with the compressors are already installed. We are in the stage of integration of this, all this facility, and we expect that commissioning will be completed probably in, 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 in four or five months. And after putting in operation this facility, we will have the power of in cold of our cryogenic system at the level of 10, sorry, kilowatt, not RV, at the temperature of 0.5 Kelvin. Concerning the organizational issues for the researchers at the, our detectors, we had uh, just a year ago, even a little bit more, the kickoff meetings at which the two collaborations have been already established with the institutional boards and all the governing structure. And now those collaboration comprises, uh, in case of baryonic matter at Nucleotron, more than 250 participants from 11 institutions. And as I told you, just three years ago, the first run was 
already completed and they have accumulated more than 200 million events of variety of targets in the beams interacting and now even the first interesting results have been already published in nature physics which indicates for the first time the possibility to provide the study of short range nuclear correlation in inverse kinematics inverse kinematics means that uh, instead of uh, having the target as a nuclei and as a beam as a proton we have the beam as a carbon and the target a, a, a proton it provides possibility to detect exclusive reaction with all the products of this interaction and gives indeed the very uh, very wide opportunities to study short range correlations in the regions which have not been studied up to now and this facility is well developed now and we expect that in the next run this facility will reach the design design parameters with a whole whole uh, acceptance of the tracking system etc you could see here the plans how the this facility will be developed and what what's planned are to collecting data concerning the collider detector the main one is a multi-purpose detector this collaboration now comprises 42 institutions and more than 500 participants and it's my pleasure to indicate that ib board chair was just recently elected professor ayala from UNAM, mexico a spokesperson is uh, adam kissel originally from warsaw technical university poland and consortium of six mexico universities is now joining this experiment this collaboration initially five universities of mexico signed the collaboration agreement in mexico two years ago you could see here this picture and the sixth one university was joined just recently you could see here the hole with a magnet superconducting magnet which houses all the other detectors of mpd at the stage of assembly is the mpd hole the installation of solenoid into magnetic yoke position measurement and adjustment is going on and uh, we expect that soon we will start all the necessary tests vacuum test cryogenic test etc and which will be completed uh, within a few months in the next year and then the, all the parts of the detectors will be uh, installed inside this magnet to be ready for the first beam collisions you could see here is a stage of the uh, cryostat with the superconducting coil installation inside this iron yoke as an element of this big detector the main tracking system time projection chambers is uh, at the stage of close to completion because all the elements uh, major elements uh, of this tpc have been already constructed at the stage of assembly electronics are produced and the chambers readout chambers uh, are, are as well produced and we expect soon it will be installed only the uh, cooling system is slightly delayed but we hope it will be done in time as well we have some other systems like time of flight systems which is the production of which is going well and we expect that at the second stage of uh, of upgrade of this detector we will use so-called inner tracker based on the maps technology with uh, almost five billion pixels with an active area almost four square meters another challenging goal was to construct electromagnetic colorimeter is a project tile uh, geometry uh, which is based on almost uh, four, 40 000 detectors of shashlik type which which uh, very complicated shape to provide the such a geometry that the oxys of which these detectors is targeting to the interaction point the production involves several institutions in china and in russia and support structure will be done from the carbon fiber because to to sustain such a high load as a 100 ton of ical and other systems 
we need so solid iron, which should be iron structure, which has no space to, to put it inside this magnet. So we use a very um, novel technology of fiber structure, which is already produced and, and expecting delivery to our site to start assembly of all the system. We have uh, five working groups to study the variety of the physics opportunities which could be started by using these detectors. You could see here the group leaders and the topics which they are going to investigate. And uh, all those groups are ready for the first day of data taking to, to really to provide the first um, first papers uh, based on the data accumulated after the first collision. The third collaboration is just at the study of, of, of organization. This is spin physics detector, but it's already comprises 32 institutions and more than 300 participants. They are planning to to uh, uh, to give us to provide to the uh, our committees uh, the technical design report in probably for the next meeting of program advisory committee. As I told you, we are planning not only the basic researches, but use this facility for the applied research. And recently it was started to foundation of so-called Ariadna collaboration, applied research infrastructure for advanced development NICA facility. We have several beams providing a variety of the ions and energy to study the chip irradiation, uh, not to study, to, to provide the cheaper radiation for the production or the development of the radiation heart electronics and investigation of medical biological objects. You could see already one of the beam with the cheap irradiation, so-called Sochi, is already installed and is at the stage of uh, um, uh, preparation for the first, uh, the first irradiation. Recently, an international advisory committee was established to review innovative and applied project at the NICA facility. The committee includes leading scientists in this field from Europe and the United States. And the formation of collaboration has begun, just begun. Just to give some example of applied research of innovation, you could see here the compact fast cyclic magnets, which are which could be produced at our facility as the most promising for the radiation therapy centers. And we are planning to have a cooperation with such centers to provide them our technology and help in organization and, and, and construction of such, such systems. As well, the development of radiation resistant electronics um, for the spacecraft. As I told you, we have already one facility already is completed and ready for irradiation. And we as well are planning to the megawatt energy storage based, based on this superconducting uh, high temperature cable. And it could be done in such a way that the uh, energy would be installed and circulating in this, uh, in this system at the level of at five megajoules and would be uh, provide us the uh, smooth uh, uh, energy supply necessary for the proper uh, function functioning of our, all, all our equipment and electronics as well we have already started to study degradation of cognitive abilities of the biological object due to irradiation this irradiation will happen during the space mission. And so it should be studied in advance what influence would be on the human uh, cognitive abilities during such a space missions. So the, you could see here the monkeys, which were irradiated rather gentle dose like X-rays in the medical centers, not so much, but those monkeys indicate some degradation after this irradiation or vice versa at some small doses, even the raises of cognitive abilities. But this is studied done by our partners from biological laboratories. We are just providing the beams and other facilities. As have been mentioned already by Dmitry, 
the recognition of our project is more or less known. S3 was indicated NICA project as a part of the European infrastructure as well as a NUPEC. And I would say as a conclusion, the GN, GNR is one of the global poles of attracting of in, in intelligence in the international research centers along with CERN and other partner institutions. All GNR basic facilities are developing steadily. The NICA projects is being successfully implemented. Six Mexican universities joined implementation of the NICA flagship project. And deep involvement of Mexican researchers in the GNR scientific program will contribute to the development of scientific and technological progress at GNR and in Mexico. So thank you for your attention. And I have completed my talk. I'm ready for questions if you, if you have any. Thank you very much, Vladimir. And uh, again, uh, thank you, uh, Dimitri, Vladimir, both of you for this uh, very comprehensive and uh, bird's eye point of view of uh, both GINAR in general and NICA in particular facilities. And um, then um, uh, what I'd like to, uh, to do now is to um, ask our colleagues, uh, both, uh, well, uh, in Mexico, uh, if they have any questions, comments. Uh, I think that, um, again, having in mind that our goal is pursuing a deeper involvement, as Vladimir mentioned, deeper involvement of Mexico as a nation, not necessarily as uh, isolated groups, but as a nation, having in mind that this is the goal of, uh, that, that we are pursuing. I believe that uh, it may be interesting if uh, uh, questions from the scientific community regarding the use of facilities, the, the way of involving uh, uh, current efforts in the in in, in our nation to, uh, to to join the dinner, um, etc. Any kind of uh, questions or comments, uh, I think, are welcome at this time. And uh, I believe that uh, Vladimir, uh, Dimitri, and uh, perhaps even Adam can uh, uh, fetch the questions and uh, provide a, a broader picture. So the floor is uh, uh, to all of our uh, uh, colleagues. Anybody raise their hands, their hands, or uh, or just uh, take on the microphone. I see one hand. Fabiola Monroe. Please go ahead. Uh, um, I don't see any hands, but. Uh... Oh yeah, Fabiola, please go ahead. I believe you have your uh, microphone muted, Fabiola. Can you unmute it? Thank you. Thank you for the invitation to the webinar. Um, I am a radio chemist. Um, what are the specific projects in this area? For example, uh, is there any project related to radioactive waste for the separation of plutonium, americium, curium uh, in the spent uh, fuels of the nuclear reactors? Uh, well, uh, well uh, we do not have such a direct um, research, but uh, um, uh, we should mention that uh, uh, what is a strong part of uh, GNR, that uh, GNR is not only uh, the headquarters located in Dubna, but also a big partner network. And uh, we are... Um, uh, we have opportunity to use uh, facilities and um, research programs and also uh, sometimes education programs of our partners. And uh, definitely we could organize something in connection with our partnership either in member states uh, or in hosting country in Russia. Thank you. Thank you, Fabiola. Uh, while some other questions are being uh, um, thought of, let me mention that um, what uh, we have in mind in terms of the roadmap to uh, deepen our involvement as a nation with uh, GINA research is to, uh, first of all, uh, after this meeting, which is, as I mentioned at the beginning, 
a kickoff meeting uh, in, within the scientific community in Mexico, uh, perhaps um, gather um, uh, more questions, comments, and, uh, and hopefully support for this idea, such that we can also express the support uh, in front of our um, decision makers, particularly our funding agency, and uh, in such a way that we can uh, foresee to complete this roadmap, which uh, next step would be uh, to plan a visit from uh, the general direct directorate, particularly Dimitri Kamanin, to Mexico to have uh, closer contacts, not only with the scientific community, but perhaps with also our, our decision makers. This, of course, has to be uh, uh, thought of and, um, and perhaps uh, uh, scheduled uh, with uh, care. In, in other words, uh, to, uh, to try to uh, um, uh, join uh, the, 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 the agendas, which are, I understand, very heavy for both parties, either for uh, both for, uh, for, for uh, the, the International Cooperation Office in, in Dubna, as well as here in Mexico. But in any case, uh, I think this is something that we should pursue. As um, Dimitri mentioned as well, uh, the, the laboratory is more than happy and ready to organize one of these GEMS uh, uh, sessions that, uh, uh, that he described briefly. And uh, to this session, as far as I understand, we can perhaps uh, think of uh, sending a delegation of decision makers, which hopefully involves uh, also um, uh, high level officials and uh, of course, maybe representatives or at least one representative from uh, the industry which they also expressed interest on, uh, on this program. So in any case, uh, the uh, talks, I think, that are ready to be started at this high level and this uh, high decision-making uh, uh, points of view. Uh, but of course, uh, it, it needs to be uh, uh, carefully planned and um, schedule needs to be defined with, uh, as I said, a little bit more of uh, uh, trying to, 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 to join together the, 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 the agendas. So uh, this is more or less what we envision. And if everything wor works all right after uh, Dimitri's visit, perhaps one of his uh, GEMS program, we can continue with this roadmap. So um, after this introduction, maybe somebody wants to discuss something particular about the physics or science uh, programs, uh, or uh, even uh, how to implement uh, in practice this roadmap and uh, costs uh, that are involved for the nation and et cetera. Please, um, anybody? Either raise your hand or, or just use up the microphone. Yes, Adam. Yes, so um, maybe I would. Uh, it would be useful to share my perspective on 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 the possible uh, participation of Mexico and Gina in a more formal way as a, a representative of uh, not Russia but one of the member countries. So I'm I'm, I'm a representative for Poland. Uh, and maybe described from my point of view as an actual person at Giner who is originally from a member country, uh, what is the benefit of having of being an official uh, participant of Giner as an associate, associate member or as a member state? So uh, from a point of view of researchers, this is extremely important because such uh, participation makes it much easier for the researchers to, first of all, just come to Giner but also their status at Gina is very uh, special. They have all the rights of being here, all the rights of participating in our, all research projects. And uh, usually if there is a significant contribution from the country to the budget of Gina, uh, this practically automatically means that the researchers from this country are, are to a large extent supported while they are at Gina. Uh, and this is certainly very helpful for, for the, the very increased participation of Polish, Polish researchers at Giner. So we as, as, as members of uh, researchers from the member country, I think are, uh, let's say, seeing that Giner is very welcoming for us and that it makes it very easy for us to come here and, and perform the research. And that is the potential, I would say, benefit that, uh, that uh, Mexico could have. And we already have several members of, of our um, Mexican collaborators in MPD who came to Giner, and uh, this is of course possible to arrange, but I think it would be even easier and it may be more uh, attractive for such people if Mexico was in, uh, in any way uh, uh, associate officially with, uh, with the Joint Institute. That was, uh, let's say my comment. 
Thank you, Adam. This is a very interesting perspective uh, because see, as you may imagine, uh, getting involved in such a venture from uh, the official point of view in Mexico uh, implies um, uh, that, that, that Mexico is willing to contribute to GINAR efforts. Uh, so of course, after an, um, uh, some, some uh, um, decision, official decision to, 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 uh, to contribute to these efforts, a large part of the budget, a part of the budget that is uh, employed for these purposes as Adam mentioned, will be used to uh, support uh, research projects from Mexican scientists. So in other words, one of our goals as scientific community, I think, is to pursue these kind of venues, which of course increment our potential as, uh, as uh, uh, scientists that are pushing the, the, the frontiers of, uh, of, of knowledge, but also as a source of, uh, of uh, funds to, to carry out this research. These funds are, of course, uh, after COVID and many other things that are happening around the world, are more difficult to access. And therefore, this uh, involvement with uh, uh, such a, such a well-established institution, I think that provides not only the, the trust to, uh, to keep on pursuing uh, uh, high level research, but also the, the necessary funding that uh, can be involved. So this is very important that you mentioned that. Adam, thank you very much for, for having me mention it. Uh, now, let me, I think it was Anna first. Anna, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, so very, thank you very, very much for this uh, nice overview. So my question is more uh, in the sense of, I would like to know the economical benefits that the member country can have uh, like, um, I don't know, companies from Mexico would be able to uh, provide services for, for the laboratory if Mexico becomes a member, or is there any kind of uh, uh, different treatment in this sense? Yes. Yes, thank you, Anna, for your question. Indeed, we have such a program of the so-called industrial return. All the member countries of our institute have privilege to get the um, contracts for the facility which we are ordering to White Wall. So this is like at CERN, member countries have privilege compared to all other countries in case of the some production which required for facilities. So Mexico has a bright electronics production, many other facilities which could be bought from our side in case of Mexico will become the members of our, of our institute. This is one, one direct benefit, which is very obvious, but some many other hidden benefits, which could be technology transfer and many other aspects, which could be provided for the member states cooperating with, with, with our institute. So maybe Adam could share with us uh, the experience uh, of Poland in this sense? So Poland is actually uh, providing, uh, especially to the NICA project, it, which, which I am participating uh, already quite a um, significant contribution for the magnet production. So there are, there are uh, components from Polish companies that are uh, produced in Poland, delivered to Giner. And uh, recently the MPD project, the production of the, the construction of the detector actually involves uh, both uh, several uh, Polish scientific institutions, as well as um, several companies that will provide uh, an important part of the electronic system of, of such a detector, which as you may imagine is, is quite complicated. And uh, we are actually very actively working to, to make sure that, that the similar contracts are actually also awarded to, to Polish companies. Um, so this, I think this is, this is mutually beneficial because Polish scientists are arriving in general and performing the research, but also um, the, this, this brings the transfer of knowledge in both ways, as well as um, with them, they bring contacts in the industry in Poland and uh, with which they actually engage Polish companies to, to, to pursue contracts in general for the execution of specific parts of, of, the, of the apparatus. Adam, probably you don't know, but I, I would add that the major provider for the uh, uh, electrical systems for the civil constructions now ordered to the huge Poland company, 
and, and this company won this uh, contract. It's a, it's a huge amount of million dollars, indeed. This is maybe, <coughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe I can add, uh, if chair allows, uh, some observation mm -hmm. from the side of international department. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, GNI is an um, open international organization, so we are very, very, we welcome very much participation of companies worldwide. But um, one crucial point uh, is uh, to get access to information. So at the moment, uh, we can, uh, I think, uh, speak on a very good level about scientific cooperation. But uh, if uh, Mexico will get status of uh, associate member, uh, Mexican uh, nationals uh, would give opportunity to become observers in the governing bodies of GNR. So level of access to information, to future information, and also involvement of uh, not only researchers, but also engineers in our research work according to the bilateral uh, research program become possible. And this significantly enable uh, the information which is absolutely necessary for your companies to participate. So uh, of course the full benefits will be achieved uh, at the level of full member, but associate member gives significant uh, impetus to development of this process. Thank you. Uh, Dimitri, I think that Alfredo has raised uh, his hand. Please go ahead, Alfredo. Yes, thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, everyone. It's very interesting to hear about this uh, this uh, laboratory and the facilities that they, they have. I believe that some of the uh, Mexican universities must be very interested in, in, in signing to this collaboration with, with, with the laboratory. And I, I am wondering if uh, you can comment or anyone can comment regarding the, the, the profiles, the skills that students uh, could have or should have in order to get involved in, in these projects immediately or eventually in, in the medium future uh, and in, in, in other projects uh, that are uh, being taking place in, in the laboratory. Uh, I pro go ahead, go ahead. I probably can answer this question. Uh, so uh, the programs which we have, in particular, uh, this uh, interest program is open for whole the world. And uh, in principle, students from uh, uh, Mexico could participate immediately. Uh, the only problem which, uh, the only practical, let's say, uh, problem which we have to solve that uh, if these uh, students will be aligned with some ongoing activities uh, jointly with Mexico, uh, it will be uh, much better uh, understandable for our supervisors uh, why they have to select those students. Because uh, as you understand, probably there are two sides. First of all, the objectives. So students could provide, should provide motivation letter, should provide some information about themselves. Uh, but then if you have several hundreds of uh, attendees, you have to understand whom to select. Yeah? And of course, uh, definitely, if there is already some ongoing project uh, or future cooperation uh, in a, let's say, very short uh, term future. So it gives additional, uh, additional argument why the student should be selected. In this sense, um, I hope that a bit later in this discussion, we will come uh, to the issue of how to develop our activity in coordinated way. This will really help tremendously. Thank, Thank you so much. Um, if I may add, and maybe Adam also can comment on this, but let me just uh, before giving uh, Adam's, uh, Adam uh, the, the floor, that um, I can comment on uh, the experience from uh, the Mexican involvement in MPD. Um, the, we have actually profited a lot from the students program because uh, given our involvement, we know firsthand uh, colleagues uh, from the MPD um, uh, collaboration, and of course know what are the areas of opportunity and what is the kind of training that we have provided to our students so that when we send them or we, we have them apply for, uh, for uh, visits of this sort, uh, they know whom to work with. So in other words, uh, I think that a way of profiting from these programs uh, is that one, in other words, uh, 
in, an involvement at the, at the level of research. But there is also another way, and I want to mention and uh, also profit from the fact that uh, we have the presence of uh, uh, the uh, um, general graduate uh, program uh, from uh, the National University of Mexico, uh, to mention that uh, another thing that we are pursuing is at the local level. In other words, uh, there are also opportunities to sign agreements between universities and junior so that the exchange of students can be made uh, more um, uh, can be made easier. An example is, of course, uh, what Adam mentioned. There is a very, very good program from Polish universities to send students to, to junior. And uh, the program that we're pursuing here at uh, the National University is, very, is based basically on that very successful program. So there are many ways to do it. And I think this connects with uh, one of the questions that are here. Uh, this is from uh, Xochitl. Uh, so uh, the, 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 what, what she's asking is how students can access to these projects. And I believe this gives you a, a sort of a, sort of a bird's eye of the many opportunities that uh, you, can, you can have for involving students. But before um, uh, continuing with the questions uh, from Cesar say, let me ask first Adam to uh, give uh, also a perspective from, from his side. Adam? Yes, so uh, as I said, I am uh, um, originally or actually still from the Warsaw University of Technology. That's a university that is uh, specified in the matters of technical and the basic science research. What we have found is that from our quite broad uh, range of topics that our university covers, I mean, obviously, the, the most, uh, let's say, directly involved students would be students of physics, uh, also of chemistry, mathematics, information technology. These are, let's say, the core competencies of, of the laboratory, and these are, the, the, let's say, the most uh, relevant. However, we have found that it is extremely, extremely useful to involve students of all kinds of engineering uh, fields mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, uh, mechatronics, automatics, they have proven to be, first of all, extremely useful. Uh, second of all, through our uh, specific um, bilateral agreement between our University of Gina, we are able to send students for three months internships in, uh, into Gina. Uh, we have so far uh, sent about uh, 150 students from, from, uh, from Warsaw to Gina uh, throughout the last uh, five years. And uh, we first of all found that uh, actually a lot, very large part of them are engineering students uh, of, of, of um, true engineering. Uh, and second of all, the students are extremely interested to come to Gina. They are very happy with the programs that we give them. And a lot of them express the wish to actually continue their scientific career here at the Joint Institute. So. Uh, as I said, that this is, uh, I would say, the, the, the profile of the University of Technology. Uh, I would say every student of the University of Technology could find an interesting uh, topic uh, uh, at Jinner. For, for, let's say, a broader university, I would still think that at least the students of biology. But also we found a very, uh, very um, non-trivial interest from students of management, of business management which were quite interested to actually come to Gina and to understand how uh, large scale scientific uh, endeavors are, are being uh, conducted and managed. So, so it, is, it is definitely focused on basic sciences and, and engineering sciences, but it, it may be also interesting to, to a broader uh, range of students. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Cesar? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, independently of uh, the interest of each of the you know, participating institutions, uh, which will be the path to, to reach an agreement between Jean Air and, <clears throat> and a Mexican institution? Let me uh, try to answer first uh, this um, uh, from the perspective of uh, national colleagues that have been uh, helping me pursuing this. Uh, this goal. And um, what we have done is, uh, in addition to uh, uh, contact a broad uh, um, sector of the, the possibly uh, scientific community which is interested or, or contacts uh, the research with this kind of uh, um, um, gene um, uh, facilities and uh, projects, uh, we have established also contacts with the Mexican embassy in Russia whom have been very instrumental and they have uh, uh, given a, a, get, get provided a follow-up uh, uh, on this side. 
And uh, for that matter, I believe that um, these will be uh, crucial to uh, reach uh, some higher levels of the Mexican uh, uh, government. Uh, but also our funding agency has been very interested at, at, in, in the sense that um, they are um, uh, gathering together all of the information and uh, they are present in this meeting as well, as well as our diplomatic representation in, in, in Russia. So uh, my uh, perspective uh, is that uh, together with the president of the Mexican Physical Society, uh, Professor uh, Ana Maria Cheto, we have uh, uh, written a roadmap that have shared both with our diplomatic representation in Russia and also with our funding agency, whose first step was this kickoff meeting and uh, whose second step may be given the interest that this uh, uh, project has raised, a meeting uh, uh, perhaps with um, uh, Dimitri Kamanin coming here to Mexico and having uh, uh, official meetings with these spheres of the federal government. So this is perhaps an important step, but it needs to be, as I said, uh, cleared up in the sense that, uh, well, of course, agendas are, are sometimes compl complicated to, 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 to join together. But one step which I believe it's crucial is that we as, nation, as a nation send a delegation to Dubna to take part of this GEMS program. I believe that that is the way that decision makers will be sure that this is a good investment for the country. In other words, uh, uh, if this delegation has uh, uh, comprises uh, both officials, but also um, high level representatives of the, of, the, of the Mexican scientific community, as well as of the federal government, this will be the, 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 the keystone to, to, uh, to, to, to raise even more interest and to give a recommendation in order to make uh, sure that uh, we get involved in an official manner. If this happens, then the next step of the roadmap is, of course, uh, having uh, uh, the, the, the committee of play potentialists in, in, in Jinner to be aware of our interest and, of course, uh, keep uh, on moving with the uh, corresponding negotiations about what is the amount of involvement, in other words, the budget and all of the requirements. In particular, it is important to establish a committee, which is a joint committee to, to see which programs uh, are um, uh, our um, uh, priorities and uh, you know these kind of things uh, so that the roadmap uh, which started today hopefully if everything uh, works out will uh, finish uh, with a positive and uh, official involvement at the end of next year we are envisioning that perhaps november will be a good idea so this is in um, basic terms our our uh, plans oh, thank you <clears throat> do you uh, dimitri want to add something on this side on your side uh, yes, uh, I would like to add something, but um, I monitor how many people are presenting, and uh, so far almost everybody uh, is there, and only four people are lost. Uh, may I propose that before we start in the discussion further on, uh, maybe for the most interested, uh, let us make a, a family photo, since uh, you already said that uh, this meeting is kickoff meeting and we will start from this point. Uh, could I ask everybody to make on uh, the camera, who can of course, yeah, and be prepared to smile. So uh, I will share, of course, afterwards uh, this picture, but you can also make print screen on your side. So uh, it is in two screens, so it will take just a few moments, be prepared to wait several seconds and keep smiling because who knows how the pictures are arranged on both sides. Uh, but uh, uh, one, two, three. Okay, one screen is done. Uh, and let me, let me repeat it again. This other screen. Um, just a moment, please uh, continue smiling. One, two, three. Excellent. At least, at least some photo will be will be provided. Uh, but uh, I would like to contribute to uh, the uh, roadmap which was presented by uh, Professor Ayala. Uh, indeed, um, uh, if we would like to achieve uh, our goals uh, in shorter time uh, with maximum performance, we have to uh, assume some coordination and some program. Uh, at the end of my, uh, of my presentation, I prepared a slide uh, with uh, kind of uh, cooperation proposals, which is to some extent repeating what Professor Ayala already said, but uh, maybe maybe uh, summarizing the idea how we are looking at this from our side. 
let me let me share my screen again with you. So uh, after this wonderful ship, I wanted to show uh, practically this picture. How to move? Okay, let me let me let me do it in a very simple way. Just to to click uh, on the button several times, and we will come to the end. Uh, so here is it. Um, well, uh, we have excellent cooperation around NICA, and of course, it's a core activity uh, which uh, could uh, serve, which could lead us to a new connection. And uh, probably this phase, which already started, uh, accumulation and enhancement of practical cooperation experience. So uh, there are opportunity to start immediately doing something. And uh, this active position of uh, Professor Ayala. Uh, and uh, this uh, open door in Mexico for GNI, I'm quite sure that uh, we will identify uh, very soon additional opportunity for cooperation. And uh, we'll start doing something uh, beyond uh, NICA. Uh, second, a networking and management of cooperation. Of course, this uh, joint coordination committee with representative from major Mexican research centers, university uh, interested in cooperation of G uh, GNM. It is uh, not only because uh, we need to distribute information, but also because uh, we need to have a balanced approach uh, of the institutions to GNI because, well, of course, uh, you know much better what you have on your side and we know what to propose on our side. So if this committee will be formed, uh, it will serve to many uh, uh, purposes, uh, including, of course, uh, representation of our opportunities to hire decision boy bodies. But at the same time, uh, what probably uh, might be one of the first tasks is to identify the contact points of GNI and Mexican organizations, especially those organizations who, who will play a key role in development of further cooperation. Uh, definitely, if uh, you have some urgent questions, we can immediately manage uh, how to answer this question. For example, in chat, we see that uh, if we are developing radiation detector, yes, we are developed, and it is done in several laboratories, in particular uh, for gamma rays, we have our, uh, gallium arsenide detectors. But uh, to uh, have opportunity to get this question, answer these questions answered locally, uh, we need uh, that uh, your contact points also visit GNI, see what our facility, make connections with our colleagues, then it will be much easier to answer the question. So it's no, no, not a fresh know-how of GNI, it's a way how the things should be done. At the same time, uh, utilization of existing instruments, uh, which should serve to enhance uh, cooperation. Uh, James was already mentioned, of course, uh, if April is okay, let's not postpone for later time, let's make an April, please identify the week in April, which will be most beneficial for, for your visit, maybe in the middle of April, for example. Uh, student programs, uh, uh, all what we are discussing seems uh, uh, it is a program for uh, some years. At least it's not short-term approach, it's a long-term approach for future. So that's why uh, it, would, it would be wise to start immediately from uh, involvement of young people, not only in, uh, in NICA, but also in other projects of GNI using our uh, program. So right now, interest. So let's think how to, to do it in a coordinated way and also some others. We could probably offer also a couple of internship uh, in, in GNI for development of uh, cooperation with Mexico. And probably this might be a first task for our joint coordination committee, how to make the calls for such internship, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, well, uh, everything concerning the research and exchange and uh, visits, uh, it is not a big problem. Thank you very much, Professor Ayala, for invitation for myself to visit uh, Mexico, which you already twice said during the webinar. Of course, uh, it will be my pleasure and honor uh, to do this job for our cooperation. Well, uh, despite uh, coronavirus is still in place, uh, we are reactivating our conferences, workshops, etc. So uh, we have to think how to use it targeted, uh, especially for uh, representation of uh, our joint interest. Let's do it. And concerning the formalization of national status of Mexico, uh, definitely to start uh, will be much easier from the level of associate membership. And let me share with you uh, the information from recent uh, uh, recent uh, uh, session of our highest level uh, body uh, committee of plenipotentiaries. 
we adopted uh, uh, a document which uh, says clearly what is associate membership. So it is a kind of uh, definition for associate membership with all the details. In our understanding, it should facilitate negotiation uh, how to make such agreement. This document is already available. Uh, it is uh, uh, on our web page and I will send you the uh, uh, adopted version. Uh, also, uh, for uh, the government of Mexico, probably uh, would have a value the declaration which was adopted in Sofia on the value of international uh, cooperation format for scientific research, uh, which in fact could be served uh, could serve as uh, open invitation for to consider opportunity to uh, expand our cooperation and to get national status. For, for Mexico as a great country, uh, we would be delighted to have such a partner in our official network. So that is a kind of uh, instant proposal which is uh, could be generated uh, out out of our discussion. Слушай, что такое случилось? Не вижу, не понимаю. Что такое? Все нормально? Нормально? Да, да, все идет. do you hear me? Can you? Yes, yes. Yes, we can. Well. But uh, your, your Russian okay. is very clear as well. Okay, excellent. Because suddenly everything uh, escaped from my screen. I thought that I'm speaking to to uh, a blind computer. No, no, no. Thank no, you very no. much. That's all. Okay, thank you very much, Dimitri. Uh, Marilena, please go ahead. Hi, thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, everybody. I was wondering, given that there is this uh, roadmap ahead of us, how uh, how us in the academic community can contribute to push for these um, activities that lie ahead of us? How can we um, um, uh, prepare our different communities and integrate efforts into uh, this, um, this roadmap? I mean, sometimes um, the, the lines of communications are difficult between us and there are several levels, uh, let's say official levels that we need to um, um, contact. And uh, it would be nice if we, we could, as academics, as, as, as interest parties and, and the, the people who will be eventually sending students and working directly with our colleagues in GINAR, um, perhaps there, there's something more concrete that we can do um, to, to contribute to these efforts. Thank you, Marilena. That, that's a good point. Uh, let me fetch this question. My um, uh, point of view, uh, as a matter of fact, I have already been um, implementing it. Uh, uh, as you know, what we've done is uh, to not only contact the interested parties uh, from the scientific point of view, which I believe uh, from uh, uh, everywhere where I've uh, uh, talked to uh, uh, colleagues and, and uh, gather strength on, about this, uh, this uh, uh, project, uh, is, uh, the response is very positive. But I've also tried to establish contacts uh, at the uh, highest possible levels at the universities and research centers. And um, uh, my personal point of view from the Mexican side is that what we need to do is now to uh, profit from this uh, interest and that each of the scientific communities in every particular institute should try to make an effort to push uh, the representatives authorities of each um, uh, institution to express the, the interest and, of course, the support for this kind of uh, project. If that can be happen at the, the if that can happen at the or at the local level, then I believe that uh, we will uh, gather even more strength. And together with the contacts that we've already made with um, our funding agency uh, or uh, diplomatic representative representation in Russia, and of course uh, uh, with all of these uh, spheres of the federal government, I think that the case will be stronger and um, it can have even better chances to, 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 to move through. So I think that in short, that is the answer. Um, uh, each, at each level, uh, sorry, at each um, uh, institution, this uh, support should be um, expressed and uh, uh, in a written form, uh, particularly mentioning why uh, each institution has its interests and uh, uh, Dimitris and Vladimir's uh, um, presentation can help to have a, even a better idea. Of course, we are always ready to answer any question that can be raised so that uh, this uh, expression of interest can be made uh, even more explicit. And once this expression of interest from each institution is gathered, we can present all of this uh, dossier to uh, uh, the, the, the corresponding uh, federal uh, government sphere. But I think this is, this is the way to, to proceed. 
Right. So perhaps just as a follow up, Alejandro, maybe yes. maybe it would be a good idea to build a, a small portfolio of I would call them success stories, given I mean, taking, for example, the, the examples that uh, Professor Kamin and all of the um, Adam and all of them have mentioned. Uh, for example, Mexican students have taken part in the interest uh, remote system, uh, training program at GINAR in all of the waves. And even before that, the in-person GINAR uh, training program for, for young students, we have had Mexican students attending that even from 2017. So we could perhaps uh, include in these um, invitations to, to, to adhere or to, to encourage or to uh, push for this uh, enterprise, uh, some examples of the, like this where uh, already, you know, Mexican students have benefited from training and, and perhaps these and other stories uh, we could um, help uh, people have a better idea of, of what could be in the near future, no? Absolutely, yes, that's, that's, a, that's a very good idea. Thank you very much for sharing. So, Alejandro, yes. can I can I add yes. some comment? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I I I would like to comment on uh, the request uh, concerning success story uh, uh, in the following way. Uh, uh, since uh, we have now fantastic opportunities and some trains, uh, in figuratively speaking, are already moving, like uh, Nika is moving. Uh, this innovation center, which I briefly mentioned, is also moving. Uh, we have uh, to uh, uh, reach our goals in a reasonable short time. That's why I may propose to combine evolutionary uh, evolution uh, development and revolution development at the same time. Evolution meaning that uh, we should uh, study all success stories. We should uh, track all uh, our actions, etc. Uh, we should, uh, let's say, spread information. But revolutionary let us to use all opportunities to study what we can do uh, with maximum performance and not miss opportunities, uh, particular uh, special events high level visits, etc. And uh, the very first opportunity seemed to be scientific council of our institute, which will be on the 24th, 26th of February. And uh, taking the fact uh, that our director, Academician Trubnikov, met uh, Anna Maria Seto in UNESCO uh, very recently, uh, probably we can start uh, from the invitation of Anna Maria to be a honored guest of our scientific council very soon. And uh, I think step by step, uh, we will find uh, what is the best trajectory uh, to reach our targets. Dimitri, this is an excellent idea. And uh, Anna Maria is here. Uh, so um, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, Anna Maria, but if you could accept this invitation, that I think will be a, an excellent opportunity uh, for you to serve as a liaison between uh, the Mexican scientific community and the Scientific Council of GINAR. Ana Maria, do you want to comment on something? Alejandro, yes, of course, I would like to comment. Well, first, uh, to say how much impressed I am by what we have seen. I mean, these facilities and the, and, and the work that uh, has been done and is been doing and, and the, the, the amount of um, international collaboration, I think it's fantastic. I think it would be really a, 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 mis a, a great mistake not to um, uh, reap the benefits of this opportunity. Um, as to my participation, well, you know, Alejandro, you know very well that I am here to, to serve, to support um, this, this project, to support the Mexican participation, perhaps, as has been said, uh, starting with an associate membership. Okay? And we will see what happens. No? But I, from what I have heard uh, and from the audience that is present, I think there is, uh, the, the prospects are great. Uh, and uh, I leave it up to you and to, to the, our colleagues in, in the interested physics community and uh, our authorities to decide whether that's my, the best role I can, uh, I can serve. So, so it's up to you. I, and thank you. I'm, I feel very much honored by the invitation. Thank you. From my perspective and uh, having uh, been uh, um, uh, 
uh, in touch, close touch with you, I think that you'd be the best uh, um, profile to attend this meeting. Uh, and of course, uh, we, we need, to, need to make it official, but, but, but I believe that that can be a great opportunity. You know about the project, you know about the facilities. So I think you are, you are, you are the best person. So thank you, Dimitri. This is a great invitation and let's follow up and uh, make concrete plans. And of course, uh, count uh, with, with us on, on, in this sense. Thank you, Ana Maria, as well. Uh, I uh, like to fetch more questions if needed, uh, or if uh, there are some. Um, please, Ana, go ahead. Uh, how the Mexican embassy in Russia could be involved and uh, what kind of support they can give? Uh, perhaps uh, I see that uh, Fernando uh, and uh, Dr. Pastrana are also present. Do you want to comment on that? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, firstly, let me to thank Mr. Alejandro Ayala for organizing this event. Let me to, to, to thank Mr. Caminin, Mr. Kekelitze, uh, Marina Tumankova Torre, uh, uh, because uh, we had the opportunity to be there two months ago in the Institute. Uh, we are clear that really this uh, possibility to cooperation, to cooperate with the Institute will be very great for us and beneficial for many of the sectors and the uh, academic sector, government sector. And uh, we have been uh, changing ideas with Mr. Ayala. At this moment, we are uh, supporting this kind of events to exchange information, to gather information, and will we support in all these uh, initiatives, maybe the project. Uh, we think that the, the steps that Mr. Ayala uh, presented today will be useful, we will support them. But at this moment, uh, we are only observing the process, but with uh, great enthusiasm and the, uh, sympathy. Uh, we hope that, um, uh, we are sure, no hope, we are sure that uh, we will uh, finally get some cooperation. I think that the government of Mexico will support uh, this initiative because as I say, uh, we are sure that they will be beneficial uh, results for us. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for the opportunity to be today here with you. Thank you, Dr. Pastrana. Thank you, uh, Fernando. Um, uh, this is actually very helpful that you've been uh, following through all this process and that you've visited dinner and that our ambassador there in the Russian Federation was also able to be there. Please thank her also on our behalf. Uh, it's been great that uh, you guys are aware and uh, value the, 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 the possibilities that uh, are open. So, Anna, uh, Anna Mischer, is, is, does this answer your question? Yeah, okay. Because uh, I think once one big step is to contact the leaders in Mexico. So, I was wondering if this could be done also through the, the, the embassy or I don't know. Uh, yes, uh, that's a very good point. Uh, yes, we've been doing it in several uh, fronts. Uh, I guess what you mean, the leaders, uh, you mean the, the, the uh, different spheres of the, of the federal government. And yes, uh, our embassy yeah. has been instrumental in that sense. Uh, they are uh, pushing through, uh, and, and I believe this is, this is great help. As you just uh, heard from uh, Dr. Pastrana, this is going to be uh, uh, something that is being built, but that uh, has great expectations and hopes to, to be, uh, to be uh, done. As for uh, the uh, funding agency, we've been also in touch with them. Yesterday, uh, Ana Maria and myself signed a, a letter directed to our uh, general director of uh, our funding agency, CONACYT, and uh, the, the Office of International Cooperation in CONACYT has been very instrumental as well to uh, um, gather all of the information, make the portfolio, and uh, contact the um, eventually 
uh, the, 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 the area in, in, in our funding agencies that is able to, to fund if uh, things uh, happen uh, the, the way we are envisioning them. Um, I think that that, uh, that is also very helpful. So I don't know if, uh, I don't wanna put anybody on the spot, but if, uh, Ana Maria, do you wanna comment on this? Yes, Alejandro, I, I would just like to add to what you have just said, but also the, um, the Undersecretary for Multilateral Affairs, uh, which is in charge of also of scientific uh, collaboration, no? uh, uh, is, has been made aware by us of, of our plans, our intentions, and they are very supportive, of course, uh, not in terms of funds, but uh, any agreement um, signed on, uh, let's say, on behalf of the government has to go through the legal office of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So the, the road is being paved also on that side to make things uh, easier and more fluent okay? so that the scientific community doesn't have to wait or to be worried about these kind of things. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is this is wonderful news as well. Um, uh, all right. So I don't see more questions, but uh, there may be more or more comments. Uh, uh, let me reiterate that uh, any other uh, questions, comments, concerns can of course be addressed to Ana Maria, to myself, to, to Dimitri, to uh, Vladimir. Um, in any case, uh, I think that uh, we are building uh, strength, and uh, we already built a lot of strength. So we need to push through the, the next uh, steps of the roadmap. And I believe that uh, we have, uh, uh, well, uh, a bright uh, future for the project. Uh, uh, if we, we, we keep uh, uh, gathering strength. So um, I'd like to just ask uh, if anybody from uh, some uh, university in, uh, in, uh, in Mexico would like to mention something else? Yeah, please. Um... Thank yes, you. Please. Thank you. Uh, I just for my Mexican fellows, I, I would like to suggest a supplement um, strategy to approach the private sector, because I think, I mean, we are highly dependent on public funding, but we can perhaps supplement our strategy by approaching some, we know it for, for, for instance, Fundaciones Lim, that we might based upon the spillovers and knowledge spillovers that has been mentioned earlier, that have been mentioned earlier, we can, we, we can maybe supplement funding, the necessary funding and to secure the mid and long-term opportunities to join this top-notch forefront research opportunity. I think uh, um, it's not just the, the, the federal government, but maybe we can um, provide some extra opportunities by approaching some important private uh, companies in Mexico. So I maybe later we can join locally and try to find further opportunities. That's a very good uh, comment. And uh, as a matter of fact, this has been one of my main concerns from the beginning. Uh, so yesterday I had a meeting, a very interesting meeting with a representative of uh, Canacintra, which is uh, the council that uh, um, englobes uh, some of the high-tech uh, companies in Mexico. And um, I invited them to be present here. And I believe that, uh, of course, uh, I contacted them about a week ago only. So, uh, but nevertheless, we have an open channel to keep on uh, uh, exchanging uh, ideas and opportunities and uh, I hope that they would be present here. I, I don't see them, but uh, in any case, uh, uh, this uh, session is uh, being uh, recorded. So I will share the, 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 all of uh, what's being said here uh, with the emphasis on the uh, possibilities for Mexican companies to get involved into dinner. So yes, uh, I've been exploring that possibility as well. And um, any help uh, from your side, from anybody's side, is very welcome uh, to, to keep on pushing this kind of uh, strategy. Thank you very much for the remark. Ana Maria? Um, yes, I think this is a very important point. Of course, we are not just looking for funding from the private sector, but for uh, also for participation. 
uh, and uh, I see that uh, I see the name of Victor from Canasintra among the participants. So Excellent. if he's Victor, present, having... it mm -hmm. would be wonderful to listen to him. Victor? No. Maybe he has his microphone. But uh, yeah. well, if, if, if it's not possible now, certainly to have this, con I am very happy that you have established this contact and uh, this, this should be further pursued. Not putting the financial, perhaps the financial issue just in front, but uh, looking at the possible participation and uh, involvement of the private sector. Excellent. There is right. much to be gained, right. yes. Thank you very much. Yes, that was my, my main um, point yesterday during the meeting. It's not that we are looking for their funding, but for their awareness of what uh, the many opportunities that are open in this, in this uh, direction. So uh, yes, I will keep on uh, uh, pushing and, um, and establishing these uh, contacts. And as I said, any help uh, from uh, the scientific community is very welcome. Thank you very much. So if there are any, if there are any other questions, please uh, let me know or else, as I said, uh, this session is being recorded uh, and I will share it with uh, those colleagues that uh, either had to leave early or that couldn't attend because of their commitments. But in any case, uh, let us uh, uh, try to uh, do this, uh, follow this roadmap and uh, uh, I'll uh, be in touch with uh, uh, rectors, uh, scientific research, uh, coordinators and stuff from uh, from Mexico to try to see, to build this portfolio that Marilena mentioned and uh, to gather support and perhaps uh, write a letter of intention um, and uh, develop the strategy to uh, keep on uh, following the, the road. So for the time being, um, I think that uh, the invitation has been uh, established and Maria uh, has accepted, kindly accepted, so she will uh, attend this meeting that uh, Dimitri mentioned. Uh, I will try to uh, uh, make uh, uh, Dimitri's visit to Mexico to, 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 uh, to, to concrete um, dates, and um, we will continue. Please, um, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, continue uh, pushing for this, uh, for this uh, development. So thank you very much to everybody. If there are any other things to say, please uh, do it. Uh, if not, um, then- uh, oh, let me- uh, Yes. Uh, let me say a few words. Yes. It's a great pleasure to see so wide uh, community joining our meeting. So many ideas expressed. Indeed, we did a great step toward joining Mexico to, to, to GNR, to create friendship, to create unit um, efforts to go ahead with the basic research, applied research all together for the benefits of both sides. So thank you very much for organizing this meeting. Thank you very much for attending this meeting. And we are waiting you in our institute in Dubna to see you as soon as possible after the pandemic uh, will be overcome and uh, I hope it will be soon. And we will jointly move, combine our efforts to the benefits of both to, to, for, for the success of basic research, for the success for applied research. And indeed, it was a great pleasure to see such many people joining our meeting, smiling people, bright people. Thank you very much for attending this meeting. Thank you, Vladimir, and thank you, Dimitri. And uh, thank you, everybody, for being present. Uh, so with this, uh, let us conclude and uh, keep on moving. Uh, we are, uh, I think, in a very interesting path. Thank you all. We'll be seeing you soon then. Thank, thank you very all. much, Alexandro, uh, for excellent conduction of this meeting. And uh, we should definitely meet again with you to discuss the outcomes and Absolutely. what to do further. But uh, let me use this opportunity to uh, send our cordial congratulations to everybody and best uh, season visions. Uh, Merry Christmas very soon. Yeah, Happy New Year and uh, COVID free uh, holidays. <laughs> Let's hope to, do, uh, to, 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 to go through that road as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Great Bye. pleasure to Nos see vemos. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Alexandro, I